It's the NFL on EA Sports, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Falcons and the Saints next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us in downtown New Orleans at the Caesar Superdome. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Garden alongside, as always, my partner Charles Davis and CD. In the few moments here before kickoff, let's give these folks at home a look at these two offenses by the numbers. What, what stands out to you? Brandon, I just continue to be amazed by the analytics of the game, and it's an area where I continue to concentrate and study because I'm still trying to figure out how coaches and coordinators can really crunch the numbers and find where exactly on the field the defense is vulnerable. It's the game within the game. And if you really dive into it, it can be endlessly fascinating. interceptions or seven touchdown passes he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play he can throw the seven interceptions just blame the football blame anything else and still carry himself like he is the man it's like you assertive in our production meetings well especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner ordering i was snacks. just gonna say that's that's where i go on first down hey bear to the right side and complete to Thomas. And he'll be just shy of the 20 and the 19 as he goes out of bounds. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Looking to throw. Hey, Bear. It's complete to Martin. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. But just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive. Couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. From the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Back to throw. Hey, Bear. Out of the backfield. That's complete to Camara. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the pass 
passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Looking to throw. Hey, Bear. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We're always talking about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. To throw on second down. Hey, Bear. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. So great at math. But I just looked over at our statistician Marvin and he signaled to me five for five to get things started here on this opening drive. Where I come from, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, what do you do defensively to adjust? Well, this is where you've got to make a decision as your defensive as a defensive coordinator. Do you really get after the quarterback? Or maybe you tighten down on the receivers, bump them off of their routes, chip away at their timing so things aren't as precise as they've been so far in this game. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. When you run into slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll look to throw again. They'll set up the screen now to Camara. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Back to throw again. Back to Kamara for another catch. And he's going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. And left side here, it's Graham. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And so far, a very nice, methodical opening drive. This has the feel of a scripted drive that they rehearsed perfectly all week long, and now they're executing it on game day. The script looks good so far. Second and one from the two. On the run, it's Burkhead. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Rex Burkhead taking it in from two yards out. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts a defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Point after here, coming up. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. So that one along a 11 play drive. And it's culminated by a two yard touchdown run.
Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Taking it about the one. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they'll be let out by the guy under center, Charles, their quarterback. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section, where the columnists write possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave what the game plan? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. Now Miller on first down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Here's Miller looking to throw on second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. That's caught by Ryzen. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Back to throw. Miller, he's going to look deep down the field. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag there. Let's check in with our referee. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. They go play action here on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 19. And he's going to take this one back to the 37 yard line. That was just one of those interceptions from our perspective. We got a good view at the 50 yard line, mid level. The quarterback and receiver were not on the same page. Just by his reaction, I'm talking about the quarterback, he expected something different from his receiver. Whether he expected him to break in, out, deeper, shorter, they'll determine that on the sideline. Bottom line, you could see that he thought he'd be in a different spot, except the defender was not his intended target. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Throwing to start the drive. Hey, Bear. Thomas has got it. Complete. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Second down and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. 
And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Young Timothy, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from New Orleans. It's the Saints in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. it up here and look to throw. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. There's Vic Beasley. It's tough to block as he gets in to bring him down. But here's what happens. Mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. The Saints on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and 14. Looking to throw. They bear. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense. And he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10. Down at the 33. They'll try the left side. McAfee. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. From the gun, Bear Over the middle, into the hands of Michael Thomas. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 20-yard line. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Now a man open down the middle of the field. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Looking to throw on second down. Hey, Bear. And he's got his man in stride complete. 
And the Saints are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Well, he's certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. From back at the four, here's second and goal. They'll try again. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Jimmy Graham, there to make the grab. And the Saints now on six to their lead. You get down near the goal line, this is what happened. A sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. They find themselves open for an easy touchdown. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And it's good to make it 14 nothing. So that will be 13 play drive in total. And it all culminates in the Saints touchdown. Just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drop. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. to play first half it's 14 to nothing a reminder coming up in a couple of minutes time we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman the coach in our EA Sports Studios They'll have a look back at the next. And now Miller hit, and he fumbles. The Saints say they have it, and they do. Every week we hear talk about great 
turnovers. Three eight turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of a quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you. All right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Because here come the defenders. Defense gets him the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. Following the fumble recovery. Hey, Bear. It's caught. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, who can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. To throw on second down. Hey, Bear. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Adam Trapper there to make the grab. And the Saints are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time when they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now 21 to nothing. Started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, Pato. Touchdown to kick. Taking it about the one. And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, punt the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. He's going to go for a big play downfield. A leap, and he's got it. He got it. And they finally get him, but not before he reaches the 33-yard line. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Back to throw. Miller. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again. Miller. He finds his man complete. That's Gonzalez. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. 
Looking to throw. Miller. Jones has it. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Operating from the gun. Miller looking for the end zone. And this one is incomplete. I believe I'm following their logic. Take the big shot downfield, loosen things up. You're hoping to get some points on the board before the half. Maybe now you come back and throw some underneath stuff in order to make sure you get a completion. on first down that leads to a second and ten to throw again Miller and oh that would get a right up incomplete nearly an interception in the end zone probably should have been third down coming up this defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. And we'll see Young Way Koo now for the Falcons. It's a 40 yard attempt from the left hash. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. Who just hit the field goal, now he kicks off. Now Bush on the return. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no further. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Hey, Bear. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. A good hands there defensively. And second down. Yeah, give some credit there. Able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. 
As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Falcons. And they will need to get this passing game in gear because they did not do much of anything in that first half. And it's why the scoreline is what it is. Meanwhile, for the Saints, they had a little more success than their counterparts did in the passing game, as evidenced by the numbers there. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball to the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Throwing to start the drive. Miller. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. <laughs> Throwing again. Miller, and that throw behind his man. He missed him, incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw, Miller. And that is incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much from the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. The Falcons send out their punter. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Oh, look at the juke. Well, net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 44. They begin on the ground with Kamara and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Looking to throw. Hey, Bear. And Martin's got it complete. And he's brought down. 
I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball. They leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, McAfee. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Back to throw. Hey, Bear. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Looking to throw. Hey, Bear. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. Out now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And his kick is good. He just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. Well, three more points tacked on, and this margin getting more comfortable by the middle. And with the lead where it is, you can actually feel good about field goals. We talk all the time about scoring sixes, not threes. But in this case, they're just looking to chew up some time and come away with points. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Taking it about the win. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. Start the drive. Miller, throw left side complete. That's Jones. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now they try the right side here. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. This defense is just flat getting after it. They've not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Miller. Complete to Jones. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. 
Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw. Miller got his man complete over the middle. That's Gonzalez. Three yards the gain there, second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second down and seven. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been...